Okay, we're gonna do the hot coat. We have the board all taped off around the rails. Uh, so I've already poured out 200 grams of resin, of epoxy resin. Um, I guess I should mention, for those of you who aren't following this video series, uh, in this video I'm going to do a hot coat on the bottom of a surfboard. Um, the previous videos have gone through and, and shown what it takes to get to this point, but uh, this will just show you how to just do the hot coat. So I have here additive F that I'm going to add to the resin. I'm going to add probably just a cap full of this. I'm not really very, uh, very particular how much of this stuff I add. It just helps for thinning, um, not thinning out, it's a surfacing agent and it really helps with fish eyes or um, I guess surfacing issues with uh, epoxy. Um, anyways, this is called Additive F, Additive F and it has xylene. So I'll probably wear a respirator soon, it's pretty stinky stuff. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mix this up preferably with a clean stir stick. So I've done 200 grams of resin. Most accurate way is to weigh it out. And then I'm gonna do 100 grams of hardener. And when you're mixing your epoxy, don't whip it around, as I mentioned in my other videos. You wanna scrape the sides, but you don't wanna be like whip, 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 and whip, and impart air in it, especially during the hot coating. I'm gonna rest it on my radiator, on the heater here for a bit, and just let it warm it up, because it's a little cold out today. I probably shouldn't be hot coating today, but I am. Uh, and I'm just gonna hot, uh, warm up the resin a bit, just to make it a little bit, make it a little less uh, um, thick. I'm gonna make it so that it flows on the board nicely when I'm working with it, um, even though the board is just a little bit cold. So, I'll come back after about 10 minutes once it's warmed up. Okay, so it's warmed up a bit. I've warmed up the resin a bit on the heater. Um, hopefully, there's a bunch of kids that just got off school, so they're out back playing out around the street, so you might hear them. So hopefully you don't hear them too much. Um, now, I'm getting my brush ready. I like using this three inch chip brush to do the hot coat. It's a really great brush. Um, you throw it away when you're done because the epoxy just, well, hardens and will ruin it. I like taking a piece of tape and just mashing it up against it to get out the loose bristles. Or else they'll break off and make your hot coat look all funky. Um, so now I'm gonna mix up some resin. Put my brush over here. I'm gonna put 100 grams of resin, I mean uh, hardener into the resin that I've already mixed with Additive F. Okay, so now we're just gonna mix it up. Again, don't whip it. Just stir it, scraping the sides, mix it thoroughly. And turn on the other camera. Now, a common mistake when you're hot coating is to not use enough resin. You want to use enough so that if you put it on too thin, what a, a tendency ha that uh, that happens is the the resin won't pool necessarily, and you'll get a fish eye, which is really frustrating. Uh, that took me a while to figure out that you can't go too thin. And also, uh, again, you want this clean. Brush it off, blow it off with some air, but don't blow it off necessarily with air from an air compressor. That might be used for tools that has an inline oiler. That's not a good idea because you'll get, well, you'll contaminate the board with oil. So best course of action is never touch the board without gloved hands. And 
work with clean tools and just brush it off, brush the dust off of it before you hot coat. Okay, so this is just about mixed nicely. I'm gonna turn on the other camera, put my mask on, and then we'll we'll gloss. I mean, we'll hot coat. And I'll just talk a little bit about technique here. So hopefully that's recording. That's recording. So the te technique to this is we're going to pour it all out again because you don't want to leave it in the pot. Then you're just going to work it all out. Back here we're going to leave a little bit extra just so we have an edge to, to grind, to sand. And we're going to work up and down the board and we're going to work left and right. So we're going to do this like that one way and then we're going to go the other way. And we're going to go around the board, around the edge like this. And that's it. Once we're done, we're done. Don't mess with it anymore. The temptation is if you have a little imperfection to go back once it starts curing to kind of try to smooth out the resin. Don't do that. You'll just end up messing it up, causing you more work later. It's better just to leave it and add, mix up some resin later and just fill it in. Okay. Just going to get rid of this. Put my respirator on. Just slowly work it across the board. Also, some of you might ask how I came to 200 grams of resin. I usually do about one half of what I use to do the lamination. I should say 200 grams resin and then 100 grams of, of hardener, but one half of what I, I used.
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go lengthwise across the board. I'm going to try to smooth this out as best we can, just gently. Now we're going to go left to right, across the board. Okay, that's it. We're done. Don't mess with it anymore. Even if you see a spot that needs to be touched up, leave it. This is nice and smooth. We have it nice and even. It's about to the point where you don't want to mess with it anymore as much as you want to. Even though I'm screwing with it right now. Anyways, so that's it. Leave it, let it cure. Sorry, take my mask off. Let it cure. Now that we're to the point where it's nice and even, you notice that the white is pretty much all disappeared um, from where you sand. Got a nice consistent color. Like I can see a little bit of my lap there. Uh, can't do much about that. But anyways, it looks pretty good. At least it looks even and consistent all the way around the board. Um, that looks pretty darn good. I'm quite happy with that. So. That is all. Thanks for watching. That's how to hot coat. I forgot to mention one thing, and it's around 
the tape. When we go to pull the tape off, it's so much easier to pull the tape off when it's partially tacky as opposed to when it's fully cured. So check back every hour and a half, um, maybe every, I don't know, half hour, just to see if it's set enough that you can pull the tape off. And right, right now, it's, I just I've just hot coated it, so obviously I can't. But once it starts hardening up a bit, that's when it's the easiest to pull the tape off and you don't have to fight with fully hardened uh, epoxy. Okay, thanks for watching. It's been about four hours and uh, I'm gonna peel the tape off of the hot coat now. Um, I think you can tell by just touching it just to see how hard this is. But it's still got a bit of pliability to the epoxy. It hasn't fully hardened yet. Now's the time to peel it off. So it's uh, dry to the touch. It's not like gooey. If it's gooey, let it set a bit longer. But now it makes it peeling this off a lot easier. As you can see like that. So I'm just gonna start the camera. Okay. And the dam here should be pretty easy to pull off too.
Okay, and that's it. Just got to go around, clean up these little tiny spots that might have stuck. And uh, we're going to flip it tomorrow. And then retape here all the way around. And then uh, hot coat the, the deck. All right. Thanks for watching.